All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Today, we are going to talk about meditation and mental health. Also, what happens in stress and how does meditation help bring us into balance? So today we have a special guest, Sonia Brill. She's a NYU trained therapist and certified in sound meditation and Ayurveda instructor, and so, soon to be certified as a holistic coach through the world-renowned Chopra Global. She is a contributing writer to the prestigious Chopra Global online magazine. And growing up, Sonia was surrounded with Eastern philosophy and recognized the intersection of science, spirituality, and Western ideology. She specializes in helping women create a positive mindset and confidence to lead happier and healthier lives. Welcome, Sonia. Thank you oh, for joining. Thank, well, thank you, Stella, for having me. I am so honored to be here with you and to be speaking on this such an important topic about mental health and wellness and meditation and stress relief. Yes, it's such an important topic now, this, right? With the stress we're having and keeping the balance between self-care and work and family and friends. I think that the place that I do want to be able to acknowledge is that the, maybe the world is not able to give us, and never has been able to really give to us what we need, and we need to be able to return back to ourselves and to our own mind and body in order to create a balance so that we feel empowered, particularly as working women or even moms who are working from home, whether they are taking care of their kids or having an online business, that we need to have our own resources to be able to feel like we are in control over our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally. And uh, thank you for sharing that. It's very important nowadays for people to feel validated what they're going through and what kind of tools they can have to move forward with their challenges right absolutely absolutely yeah. and i think it helps us just just in general feel this sense of being resourced within ourselves and i can't stress that enough mainly because the more we feel like we have the power to come back to ourselves mm -hmm. activate our mind and body be able to trigger self-healing mm -hmm. the more um more inspired we feel, the more motivated we feel, the more confident we feel as we interact with people in our lives, as we interact in the world out there. Mm, yeah, that's for sure. That's for Sonia, now I would like to ask the first question I have for you is, how is meditation an antidote to stress? That's a great question. First of all, I want to talk a little bit about stress itself, where because we're dealing with so many uh, incoming stimuli, whether that is trying to juggle what's happening in the outer world, what's happening in our minds itself, and the number of thoughts we have. Over this past year, we've been uh, asked really and demanded to be able to make rapid shifts from working outside to working inside the homes. And now there's this sense of flex space occurring between working outside and inside, juggling kids, for instance, mm -hmm. juggling partner, juggling work, juggling neighbors. There are so many aspects that put a huge demand on our physical body and mind. And when that demand becomes too great, then our resources feel like they're being depleted. That's when we experience stress. And we need to know that that's what stress is about. So how does meditation really help us or become the antidote to stress? The key factor in that is when we're experiencing stress, mm -hmm. there is that primal response, which we all know about, that fight and flight response in which our body goes into uh, over drive for lack of a better term in which there's a release of chemicals our heart beats faster our pulse goes up and the body is in the state of hyper vigilance to fight off a threat whether it's perceived sure. or real danger right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's what's happening at that point and so we could say the sympathetic nervous system becomes very active and it helps us survive what's occurring out there and what the experience is internally so what does meditation do and how is it an antidote to stress Meditation helps us be able to start to rest. So it activates the parasympathetic system, which helps us to slow down. It helps us to refocus and it helps us to return ourselves back into that state of feeling resourced again. Yeah, yeah, totally. This is beautiful. And I know like today with a lot of stress, right? We're being exposed to overactivate 
uh, sy uh, sympathetic system, basically. And parasympathetic system is like being hurt, let's put it that way, right? Because we're not on that restoration mode. Very much so, very much so. And I think, unfortunately, what happens for us is that when we are in that mode, it's almost as though we can't break out of that cycle. Mm -hmm. And we keep going and going and going until we experience overwhelm and burnout, which we're noticing all over. Yeah. Everyone's talking about it right yeah. now. It's, it's there. Our body and mind is like so in overdrive. Yeah, that's and, for sure. And, right? And so we don't, one of the things we forget is we can come back to ourselves, mm -hmm. to be able to return to ourselves. As opposed to looking out there, we can look inside ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it's also important probably to just check in with ourselves because sometimes with burnout symptoms, it becomes so chronic that it feels like natural just to be in it. And we stop remembering like, oh, it used to be different before. I used to feel better, right? More balanced, happier. And then it's good to check in with ourselves, right? Very much so. Yes, very, very true. So I think part of, I think it's a wonderful question you're asking because in essence, what it, what meditation does is it gives us the opportunity to be able to slow down. And there's been so much research that's been done, which shows that immediately as you start meditation, that the brain activity that has been going and going and going starts to reverse itself and starts to trigger self-healing actually, mm. naturally. And so when we, for instance, when we go to sleep, mm -hmm. we're in this dull state. We don't have any experience going on, but when we're in meditation, we are in this state of awareness, but it's as though we are experiencing the benefits of sleep. That's not to say we replace sleep with meditation, but it has an incredibly powerful effect on our body and mind to be able to rejuvenate, to be able to relax and to be able to find the center that we lose uh, as we start becoming overstressed. Yeah, it's probably important also to pay attention what we do before going to sleep as well, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Because the more activity that we are involved in, the more screen time that we have right before sleep, mm -hmm. The brain at that point, when we go into deep sleep, is then in the process of having to sift through that material, go digest that material, if you will. And when we wake up, we wake up really tired, or most people complain that they have too many thoughts in their head, or they feel sluggish, even as soon as they, they're not even out of bed, but they're already feeling like they've had a full day. Yes, exactly. Uh, the next question is what happens in stress and how does meditation help bring us into balance? Well, if we're talking about stress, as, as you can understand, what we're essentially saying is that the body and mind is an overdrive. Mm. And the most important thing that meditation does is it activates really the rest and response state and the self-healing state. And it triggers that process through rest. If we understand, if we think about it, when people get sick, what do we do? We rest. And when we rest, our body starts to recuperate. It starts to heal. It starts to recover. Mm -hmm. So from the Vedic perspective, mm -hmm. when the body is in rest, it is able to uh, send information and energy, which the body needs, obviously, in order to be able to rejuvenate the cells in, in order for information to pass through and for our systems and organs to work optimally. Now, in Vedic philosophy, there are what they refer to as nadis. Nadis are called channels or energy centers, and there are about 72,000 of them in the body. Wow. So when we're meditating, those channels actually open up. Mm -hmm. And when they open up, the energy and information flows very easily. When we're in stress, however, these channels are blocked. And so the energy and information doesn't flow and the body doesn't work so well. And we know this because mm, when we're stressed, we yeah. feel sluggish, we feel tired, we want to lay down, we want to take a nap. But when we're rejuvenated and the energy and information flows, we're, we're luminous, we're radiant, yeah. Yeah. we're feeling energized, we're feeling alive. And this is part of the reason why that's happening is because there's energy and information that's flowing mm. through these channels. Mm -hmm. And that's a key thing that meditation is able to do. So it helps us rest and it helps us open up these channels so that our body and mind function optimally. 
and yeah. helps us return back into balance. Yes, I just wanted to say that it's almost like returning back to ourselves. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. true, Stella. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And at the core of meditation practice, particularly sound meditation, we are, you know, the invitation is to return back to the self, the self that is beyond the thoughts in the mind, the self that goes beyond the emotions mm -hmm. that we have, thoughts and experiences that we have. And it's that self that is so powerful mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. capable yeah and i'm sure it brings uh it makes it easier to connect to our own needs uh and understand what needs are because with the social media with everything what's happening it's a lot a lot of information right it's easy to get lost in this and understand what's my needs what others needs what do i have to do right it's like interesting like what you mentioned it's like connecting to ourselves and understanding what do we really want Absolutely. And I think you make such a wonderful point that when we start to connect to ourselves, mm -hmm. we start to really then connect to other people around us and the world around us oh, and there's yeah. greater equanimity totally. and peace and love, which is, I think we're all seeking that, right? Yeah, At a deep for level. Sure. For sure. For sure. And yes, that brings not only mental well being, but also physical like well-being right um those yeah. somatic reactions we're having because our body stores so much we are not even aware about that but sometimes we're having certain uh physical symptoms it almost gives us signs like pay attention to your body and to yourself you know so much information there that's so true i mean at some level you're right the body is constantly nudging us <laughs> and saying, you know, look, don't neglect me. I'm still here. You can't keep just keep riding me along, right? Yes, yeah. You know? Yes, our logical mind likes to do that. So that's why it's good to be present to our body as well. Absolutely. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, thank you, Sonia, for sharing that. And I have um, another question for you, which is what is so special about mantra meditation? Because I know you do uh, a lot of mantra meditation and you know a lot about that. Yes, I think there's so many different forms of meditation that are so beneficial. Why do I love mantra meditation? Why do I teach it? Because it helps us return back to our elemental nature, our essence. If we think about it, everything in the world, in the universe, is made out of vibration and energy, right? At the most basic level. And Mantra is basically a sound vibration that we're using, which has no meaning. Mm -hmm. So thankfully for a moment in time, we don't have to think about things which have construct, thoughts have construct, and they also have meaning. Whereas mantra, we're using the mantra just purely for the sound vibration. And it gives us this opportunity basically to turn inward. And what it does is it helps us move from this horizontal level of the mind. Mm -hmm to a vertical level. So we move from that topical states of activity, thoughts, emotion, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And we start to move inward. And as we go inward using mantra, the deeper we go with it, the quieter and quieter and quieter mm -hmm. we become. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The thoughts start to just, yeah. And nothing's more attractive really to the mind sure. than itself, you know, than its own nature. So that's the reason. So, and it, it helps us use these very basic sounds in nature, you know, basic sounds in nature, are like the sounds of the raindrop, the sound of the ocean. These are very elemental sound. And so we're using this sound vibration without context, without meaning, mm. without definition to help us return back to ourselves. Yes. Uh, another one I wanted to mention, and you said it returning to basics. That's right. Yes. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. And um, thank you for sharing that for sure. Uh, I think it's very important and uh, informative. And also, I wonder if you can share with our viewers any tools or tips while they're starting doing meditation. I know a lot of people having challenges even to sit down and be with it or even having this like five, 10 minutes, if you can share. Some Absolutely. Stuff. Yes. So if you're just beginning a practice, be patient with yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you're asking your mind and body to do something it's not accustomed to doing. And so the most important thing is to say, you know, to grant yourself this permission mm -hmm. to be in the space of saying, it's okay if I can't do five or 10 minutes, start with a minute, start with two minutes, start with three minutes. Mm -hmm. So the first thing, like I said, is to give yourself permission and patience. The second is to start with very little time. 
as opposed to setting up, you know, say 20 minutes or 30 minutes. We don't need 20 or 30 minutes. Start with something really small. The third thing is if you can't sit still, lie down, prop up some pillows. You don't have to sit up tall and straight and have your spine erect. Um, it's totally, be totally comfortable. That's the most important thing in meditation practice is that you're comfortable. So that those are the three most important tips that I can offer. Mm -hmm. I would say it doesn't have to be done in the morning. If you feel like you're in a rush in the morning to get to work or you have to tend to your kids, mm -hmm. do it when you can and then start to integrate that practice into the morning and into the evening. So build slowly is my suggestion. Yes, totally, totally. And I think oh, what's significant information is also we don't have to have certain position because I think it's a stigma or like stereotype. I have to sit certain way, like a uh, breath certain way. You know, it's like what you said, just feel comfortable. You don't have to sit with a lot of position or this position. It's just like connecting to yourself that moment and feel comfortable. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And like also uh, it's a suggestion, I'm sure from Sonia and from myself too, even if it's like a couple of minutes per day, it doesn't have to be 15, 20 minutes. How long you can do it's up to you. You can start with two, three minutes and then see how long you can stay in it. And it doesn't, I, I just noticed also myself, a lot of clients asking, oh, I have so many thoughts. I don't think I can do meditation. It's totally normal that you have thoughts, right? It's like just watching the thoughts come and go. That's the practice of it, not reacting on them, just watching them. So it's normal that we have thoughts. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the interesting thing is, if you think about it logically, even you're finally giving your mind a chance to just be. And when it's having it a chance to be, what it, it does, what it's always been doing, which is it generates not only thoughts, it generates even more thoughts. Yeah. The thing is, but if you do it for seven days, 10 days, what you'll notice is that there's a decrease in thoughts. It's kind of like starting an exercise regimen, if you will. Initially, you're feeling a little bit sore. You're not you know, seeing the results immediately. And, um, but as you stick with it, you notice the benefits of it, you feel better, you have more energy. Mm -hmm. And although meditation is not an exercise program, yeah. uh, it is a good example to give to you mainly because it, it allows you to understand that it takes a little build a bit of time to build up to it. And once you do, you're like kind of doing it, you're, you're feeling great. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, this is so important what you shared, and I'm, I'm sure it makes a difference. It makes a difference for me to hear all that as well. So uh, thank you very much, Sonia. Do you have any couple of words to share right before we complete this amazing interview? Oh, Stella, I really appreciate you having me on your show and your program. I think this is such an important and valuable subject matter because we all need tools and resources mm -hmm. in order to come back to ourselves and recognize how truly powerful we are. And I think the world out there mm -hmm. somehow informs us we're not enough. We're not adequate. Mm -hmm. We're failing in some way. We're not doing enough. And our mind and our thoughts kind of reverberate the same thing. And I think what you've done here today is allowed us to talk about something important so we can kind of come back to ourselves and know and realize, no, 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 that's not really true. Yeah. We really are capable. We really are able and we really are enough. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Sonia, for being here and also just pointing out that uh, prioritizing our well being and taking care of it and having boundaries with whatever doesn't work for us, right? Even having boundaries with ourselves like when do we cross our own boundaries when it's a well-being time and then we do something else instead so uh thank you very, very much for uh pointing that out and um, sharing some tools with us so thank you very much for being here and um, everyone i hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions comments please comment below i would love to hear your feedback thank you very much <laughs>